Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Profile Manager. And we're going to look specifically this week at how do you set up your settings for users and groups. Now, we've been doing a series on Profile Manager here for OS X Server. And if you haven't looked at the other Profile Manager uh, tutorials that we've done, you might want to go back and take a look at those. Uh, we've done I've done tutorials on how to set up Profile Manager. Uh, how to enroll your iOS and your Mac devices, and then we did a kind of an overview of the Profile Manager web interface. And so you might want to go back and look at those first before you uh, go into this uh, screencast here. Uh, but if you wanted to see how uh, the different settings and things are done on Profile Manager, that's what I'm going to cover in this particular screencast and cover that for users and groups. So now to get into Profile Manager, you would just click this link down here that says Open Profile Manager. Now I've already done that, so let me just go ahead and pull that screen up and and this is the profile manager interface and we've done this uh, in a previous screencast where I walked you through all of the details so this week we're gonna focus on this users and groups area and we're gonna focus on the settings tab and how to uh, set up your settings for uh, your various users and for your various groups now the settings for users and groups are basically the same and so you can go in and customize those and it's up to you how you want to do that you can customize them on a per user basis or you can customize them on a per group basis it's really up to you on which way you want to do that uh, a lot of times it's easier to do it by on a groups basis uh, for instance if you've got uh, a number of kids in your household maybe you create a kids group and then you can configure the the settings that way and then all of those settings would be pushed out to every user and every kid in that group and so a lot of times that's an easier way to do it uh, but you certainly can do it uh, by the actual user as well so what I'm gonna do in this case is just show you by user how to set that up on here and then I'll just show you that it's the same when we get to groups so if you come into the settings area here, you've got your basic uh, settings for this particular user. I just chose the shared contacts user. And I'm just going to say edit to edit these settings. Now when I do that, I get this drop down, uh, which basically shows um, all of the different settings that I can work with here uh, to get these things set for this particular user. Now, uh, what we call these different changes in settings, we call them a payload. And that's just because that is the certificate that will get delivered. Uh, to the devices that this user uh, uses and so um, that's what that payload is we're kinda creating what what the payload is in here uh, at any time if you make any changes you can just click cancel and it will put you back to where you were so I'm gonna walk through each of these sections but I want you to notice here's a section for OS 10 and iOS and so all of these particular settings will impact both of your iOS and Mac devices but if I scroll down you see here I've got specific iOS um, basic settings there and I've got settings specific to OS 10 so I wanted to show you the differences between that that they're divided up in sections so let's go ahead and take a look at each of these here in the OS 10 and iOS uh, area here. Uh, we've got a general setting that can be done and again it tells you what profile distribution type you want to use. Uh, automatic push is the easiest one to use because once you make a change then it gets pushed to any device that that user's on. So the next time they log into that device or open it up these change the changes you make will be pushed. Uh, you can do manual download as well which basically just means it's up to the user to be able to download the profile to do the update. And so this one is more of a hassle uh, than using automatic push so I would highly recommend using that. Then you can put in the name of your organization in the profile and as we have here it's just got my domain name showing here as the um, actual thing that we would use there. Uh, then you can put in a description of the profile if you wanted to do that if you wanted to kind of keep it uh, separate or you wanted to have the name in there uh, you could do that as well. So let's go ahead and go through these different things here. I can set a um, basic setting for passcode and if I just click configure here here is where I can set up how I want the passcode to work. Uh, I can set up uh, how they have to have their password put in there. I can require alphanumeric uh, values. I can set the length that I want for the password, the maximum passcode age, so that it, every so many days it would force them to put in a new password, uh, the passcode history, uh, grace period for the lock if it locks, um, delay, uh, however many minutes um, be, uh, before the next attempt if they fail too many times to log in. So I can set specific things for the passcode there if I'm concerned about security. Uh, next I've got mail and so I can configure my mail in here. Now if I've already configured mail in the server application and uh, made it available to this particular user then that uh, configuration will already show up here. 
If not, I can click on configure and I can actually configure all of the settings here for the mail account, including the incoming and outgoing uh, mail server name and all of those details. So I can actually set up my mail accounts in here. Uh, you could do the same for Exchange accounts. And so if you've got uh, Microsoft Exchange that you need to connect to, uh, you've got the same thing here where you can set up all of the settings you need to set up to make mail work. Then we've got our uh, LDAP uh, setting here, which is basically our setting for our open directory. And so we can put in our directory settings in here if we want to, in, terms of, in, in addition to the search settings. Uh, for the server where I can set up the description, the scope, and the search base. Again, this is a little bit more of an advanced thing for those of you that have uh, this kind of setup. You can actually put that information in there. Again, contacts and calendar uh, will automatically be configured uh, if I've already got those set on the server. In this case, I don't have those settings enabled for this particular user, so that's why it's not showing. But I'll show you what that looks like when we take a look at the groups area. Uh, but again, I can put in all of my information for my calendar, for my contact server, as well as for my calendar server right here. Then I've got a network setting where I can configure the setting for my network. And so if I've got a Wi-Fi setup uh, that I want my user to be able to log into and I just want it to happen automatically without having to set it manually myself, I can come in here, put in my SSID uh, for my particular network. Uh, I can say, um, you know, whether it's a hidden network or not. I can say auto join so it'll automatically log them in and uh, then just basically put in uh, the password here for the wireless network and what that will do is automatically when that user logs in and this payload is pushed it will configure their network settings so that they will log into your Wi-Fi network so you can see this is a really powerful way to be able to set up your users ahead of time so that then when they just come right into your network and log and and basically turn on their computer and that push notification comes through all of a sudden now they're able to log into your network automatically without you having to give them all of these settings to make it work uh, we got VPN. Again, the same thing. If it's configured on the server, it will automatically be there. If not, I just have to click on uh, Configure here and put in all of the information that I need for my particular uh, VPN uh, setup. And again, that'll push those changes to my device. Uh, I've got certificates here. So if I need to add certain um, certificates to this, again, this is a little bit more of an advanced feature for those that need to have certain uh, certificate credentials and things on there. Uh, you would just click on add a certificate and you would add that information uh, file right in here and it would add the certificate to your device. Uh, then we've got the S, uh, SCEP uh, for those particular servers. Again, that's a different kind of uh, setup here uh, with some of your um, customizations and things like that. Uh, again, this is more for um, you know uh, companies and businesses that would use this type of a setup. Uh, we can set up web clips if we want, and so if you've got a particular web clip that you want to have uh, show up, uh, let's say on an iOS device, where it would show up as an application, uh, you can actually set that up here, even put an icon on there, and then what will happen is it will actually push that web clip to their uh, iPad screen, and then they'll just have an application button to push to get to your web app or whatever it is you want them to have access to. So again, a nice quick way to be able to set that up and make that work. Uh, a new feature is the ability to add fonts. If I just click on this, I can actually add uh, font files uh, to the different machines. So if you're working in a business where you want to have a standard set of fonts, you can come in here, click on the upload button. It'll ask you to identify where those fonts are. You can add them and then uh, they'll be pushed to your, uh, to your device. Uh, also, there's AirPlay, and so we'll just continue our tour here. If I just click on con uh, Configure, if you've got AirPlay devices in here, you can set up the device name and include the password so that basically uh, they'd have the AirPlay destinations already loaded into their machine. You can see here I don't have any destinations available. If I did, they'd be listed here, so I'm just going to cancel that. And then we've got security and privacy, and this is the ability to set up all of the things in system preferences under the security and privacy uh, icon. So you can tell you that you can allow uh, set it up so that users can't override gatekeeper settings. So that way, whatever you've set is set, so they can't open applications you, that don't pass the gatekeeper setting. Uh, and then you can specify uh, whether they can change their password or not, when to require a password, all of that sort of stuff for OS X. And then you've got your privacy over here. If you want uh, the diagnostic stuff sent to Apple or not, you can check or uncheck that. Okay, so that gives us an idea of the OS X and iOS things together. Let's look at the uh, iOS uh, details here. 
Uh, for iOS, we can set restrictions, and this is the restriction information that is on your iOS device that allows you to say what can and can't be used. And so you can actually turn off all of these different things if you want. Uh, you can turn off automatic syncing while roaming. Uh, if you look here, you can turn off handoff. I mean, you can basically customize what can happen on that iOS device however you want right in here in this restrictions area. Uh, you can also restrict certain apps, whether they can use the iTunes Store or podcasts or how they can use Safari. Uh, again, it again, it allows you to customize it. And then your media content, right, what you want them to uh, be able to have access to and whether they can play back explicit music and that sort of thing. Uh, in certain books uh, from the iTunes bookstore. Again, this comes in handy on iOS devices, especially when you have kids or somebody that you really want to monitor. Uh, again, global HTTP uh, policy. Uh, this really won't come in uh, too much for the general user, but if you have a proxy server that you want to use uh, that will cache web pages and things like that, uh, you can put that information in here. Uh, you also got a content filter, which has been added now. And this allows you to, um, it's already limiting adult content in this case, but you can actually permit certain URLs and you can actually blacklist certain URLs. So certain websites you don't want people to have access to. So this allows you to fine tune how you manage your iOS devices. And you can do the same with domains. Uh, let me say configure. If you wanted to uh, configure different like unmarked email domains and uh, so addresses that don't match these domains are going to be marked uh, in mail as ones that are kind of flagged. Uh, you can also manage uh, web domains as well uh, for which documents are going to consider to be managed or not. And so that just allows you to manage your device by domain, uh, which again, if you're in a school or something, you can limit the domain to your school and uh, then people can't, kids can't go outside of that. Uh, single sign-on, uh, which basically allows you to uh, use Kerberos to sign on to your various accounts. You can put in your information here for single sign-on and uh, allow that to happen. Uh, then you've got AirPrint, where you can set up an AirPrint uh, printer. You just click the plus there and put in the IP address and the source path, and then that printer uh, for AirPrint will automatically be configured on your iOS device. Uh, again, subscribe calendars allow you to subscribe to certain calendars if you've got one that you want everybody to have a subscription to. And then you've got your APN, which is your access port name. Um, and this is basically just if you're using a certain access point uh, you know, with um, a different proxy server and port and that information, you put that in here. And again, that's, that's a little bit more advanced for advanced users. Most home users wouldn't have that happen. Now in OS 10, uh, the final area here, you've got your identification area again, where you can put in the user's display name, their email address, username and password. Uh, you can also set up restrictions in OS 10, just like in iOS, only your restrictions go more with system preferences. So you can restrict these items and system preferences. And if I click this right here, uh, I can either enable or disable the selected items or select the ones that I want enabled and everything else will disappear and just won't show in system preferences. Uh, the same is true for apps. I can allow certain apps and things to happen here. I can allow apps uh, and restrict which apps can uh, be allowed or disallowed and put that information in there. I can even manage widgets and say what widgets I want to have on the dashboard, which ones I'll allow. Uh, media, I can also choose whether or not you can use AirDrop or certain disk drives uh, on a Mac. And then sharing, I can say what sharing services are allowed to show up in the sharing services area. Uh, like for, for instance up here, you know, where I've got this share area, I can set what is allowed up here and what is not allowed uh, to be shown. And then on the desktop, I can lock the desktop picture if I want to do that. Like I, maybe I want a standardized picture for all of my machines. And I don't want kids putting up funny pictures or weird pictures or anything like that. Uh, messages, again, this allows you to configure the messages service. If I just click on configure, I can set up the different uh, account there for uh, messages if I'm running my own. And then I've got an AD certificate. And so this is for Active Directory. So if I'm using this with a Microsoft Active Directory, uh, I can put the credentials I need to put in there as well. Now for login items, I can actually say what I want to have happen when uh, you log into your Mac. I can have certain apps launch. I can have certain folders that are going to open uh, or items that log in. I can have authenticated network mounts. So if I've got different drives and things that I want to have uh, mounted, I could do that and set up uh, the different volumes that will uh, that will uh, show up as well and automatically mount. And this comes in handy if you've got certain shares on your server that you want to show up on your Macs when you log in and just have them automatically show up there. In the screencast, I showed you how to do an auto mount manually. Uh, if you wanted to have an auto mount be pushed to your devices, you would set that up in here. 
Next, we got mobility, and I'm going to go in this, uh, into this in more detail in a future screencast, but this allows you to set up mobile accounts so that if you do have home, home folders on your server, this will allow you to sync those folders back to a Mac, like a laptop, so that when that laptop leaves your network, uh, all of their information goes with them. They don't have to rely on the server, but when they come back in your network, anything they change will be uh, in sync uh, back to your server so that everything stays that way. And I'm going to show you how this works in a future screencast. Uh, the dock, we can configure the dock as well. And so again, all of the different dock settings that you normally see, you can configure in here. What apps are in the dock, um, you know, all of that information can be done here. Uh, again, printers, if you want to set up printers ahead of time, you can set up your various printers and have that ready to go and automatically push to your devices. And we've even got parental controls in here. Again, if you've got kids, you can set up your parental controls just like you would on your Mac in System Preferences, only you can do them in here with time limits and everything and have those things pushed to your devices as soon as your kids log in. Next, we've got the Finder. Uh, again, we can customize what's shown in the Finder and what's available in the Preferences area and the different commands. Uh, in the Commands window, um, you can actually set those up too to either show or not show various commands. And then finally, we have accessibility. And again, this is the accessibility stuff for vision, hearing, and interacting, where you can set all of these different details, just like you would in system preferences. And then last, we've got custom settings. So if you wanted to upload your own property lists and custom settings, you could do that. Again, this is a little bit more advanced, and uh, we could actually do a whole screencast on just how to do this, but I'm just going to just kind of show you that that's available if you want to do that. Now, once I've set up all of these settings, all I'd have to do is say OK, and it would save them and then push that information uh, to that user whenever they log in. Uh, but what I'm going to do is click Cancel just to reset everything back to default so that I don't have to worry about it. And you can see all I've got is the general settings there. Now, these settings, like I told you, also work with groups. So if you went into the groups area and you went into this zone here, you can see these settings for everyone have been set up here. I've allowed all of these settings that I've done on my um, computer there. If I were to click edit here for the groups area, you'll notice that all of these settings are the same with the exception of, notice I've already got these payloads set up. So if I click on contacts, you'll see it's got my server information on here uh, because those settings are already put together and ready to go because it's using the server app. But otherwise, all of these settings for groups are the same. So you can actually use them, like I said, on a group basis or on a user basis. It's up to you on which you prefer. Let me just click Cancel here. So that gives you an idea of how you can manage users and groups using OS X Server. Uh, again, when you're using Profile Manager, this is a great and very powerful way to be able to manage your users in all of their settings. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.